So the, the small modular reactors um, are really designed with uh, incredibly safe modern nuclear safety cases, but they are also of a size where they would be retrofitted very successfully onto existing coal plants. And they do that in a way that they would complement and grow our capacity to have low carbon energy. Uh, one of the great benefits of these small modular reactors is that they would be very accessible to Australian companies to participate in establishing them. Uh, they work on uh, nuclear fuels that uh, are incredibly safe and are next generation accident tolerant fuels. And so the great benefit of going with these uh, safe plants um, in our standard grid is that we would have the opportunity to have, have really reliable, very safe and low carbon energy. But there are also micro reactors that can be used in places like Christmas Island or in the Northern Territory. In the Northern Territory, you've got a massive diesel grid, which needs to be replaced with a safe and effective form of providing electricity. And I believe that these micro and, and smaller reactors would be really suitable to some of the small islands that we have. Uh, Christmas Island, for example, mm -hmm. and also in the Northern Territory. David, I'm going to put on the screen exactly. a whole list of, uh, is... of countries around the world who, who are using this nuclear power model. Uh, they'll be up there so people can see how widespread it is. But, but just on that point uh, that Aidy's making there, the response from Bowen to most people who talk about, well, if you really care about the environment, you would have nuclear in your mix. His response has always been, ah, it's just way too expensive. But this smaller scale reactor, that blows that argument out of the water, doesn't it? It does indeed. Look, when I travelled to Canada, because they're the uh, leader of the pack in deploying small modular reactors and licensing them as well, and they've got experience in nuclear reactors since the 1950s, they've also got the cheapest electricity, funnily enough. When I was there, ov overnight off-peak electricity was six and a half cents a kilowatt hour. And that's at your plug. Not a wholesale price, but that's because they've got 65% of their energy coming from baseload reliable cheap um, nuclear power. Uh, look, his response is almost emotional. I have spent time briefing him on these things, but he's not for shifting. Uh, but I think his unions will. Look, the UK Labor is all for nuclear, uh, along with Joe Biden mm -hmm. and along with the Greens in Finland and other places in Europe. So what's their problem? Nuclear power, as AD pointed out, is incredibly safe. These latest models have in inbuilt safety systems that weren't possible in the 1950s and 60s, so that all these horrible things that have happened in the past um, don't or can't happen and tolerant fuels, the new triso fuels, will also do that. So, look, I'm really pleased that one big uh, giant of a company called BHP has belled the cat. Uh, anyone who thinks we're going to mm. get to net zero by 2030 or 50 or whenever, you can't do it without bundles of zero carbon energy. And nuclear delivers that. And it's the perfect complement for renewables because to expect them to do yep. everything, which is what co um, the current plan is, um, is unrealistic, both it's economically... It's fanciful, David. The I'm out of time. Of, yeah. Uh, yep. Thank I, you very much. Yeah, I'm out of time. But uh, no, 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 you both deserve congratulations because I know you've done a lot of work behind the scenes to get to where we are today. Thank you. Well done and, and more strength to your arm. Dr Adi Patterson, thank you again. David Gillespie, as always. All right.